So, I've got some really bad news. Um, fourth day of my Wyoming hunt. Um, I was hunting with Steve and Trent from Born and Raised Outdoors, and we'd been doing these crick crossings, and I uh, I slipped on a rock, and I had my bow in one hand and my big backpack on my other on my back, and then <clears throat> I took my free hand, which was my right hand and I stretched it out to to break my fall because I fell face forward up against the creek bank <clears throat> and um, I hit the ground super hard and when I hit I felt a big pop in my shoulder and um, I couldn't get up um, the, my my arm wouldn't work um, so Trent helped me up and I got Got on my feet and my arm was just useless. It would it wouldn't work. Uh, I could barely even move my fingers. Um, kind of like a dead arm, if you will. So, pulled my shirt off, put some cold water on myself, kind of trying to figure out what was going on. And, and uh, kind of the long and short of it is, is I partially dislocated my shoulder, um, and lost most of the use of my arm. So of course I'm now I'm playing the waiting game with uh, the insurance company trying to get approval for an MRI to get it looked into further, um, and um, I had a trip scheduled to New Mexico and um, I had to bow out. I could not I could not uh, make the trip down there because my arm's not working. So I got kind of pissed off about it, kind of down about it, and I'm like, you know what? I'm not gonna sit on the sidelines of September and go down like this. So um, did some research and, and I had a lot of, lot of uh, uh, friends and, and uh, followers on, on social media say, hey, you need to get a mouth tab um, set up on your bow and shoot with your teeth, basically. Pull your bow with your teeth and then shoot it. Um, which I'd, I had kind of thought about that, but it seemed like it would be pretty troublesome. So I started watching some YouTube videos. I watched John Dudley. Uh, do it. I seen one of the uh, para athletes, uh, one of the from the U.S. Olympic team shooting team, uh, and he shoots with a mouth tab. And I was like, you know what? If those guys can do it, I can too. So I went down to my local pro shop and uh, Diamondback shooting range and had my good buddy Justin Grimes hook me up, and we spent all afternoon setting my bow up so I could shoot it by pulling my bow back with my teeth. And um, I think it's gonna work. I, I, my, I'm pretty limited to range. Maybe 30 yards uh, would be max, but uh, I think I can do this. All right, I'm gonna have these guys. Well, Justin here at uh, Diamondback Shooting Range set up my bow for that pull tab. Uh, I don't know. I see other guys can do it, so I'm gonna give it a shot and see if I can do it too. So I'm gonna try to get set up here and be able to go take a few shots, get good at it, and maybe be lucky enough to take a bull elk with it. So let's go on in. So what I did was, is I went by the pet store and got a dog collar. Uh, it's about the width of my finger, about a half inch. And uh, this thing has a couple loops on each end of it. Uh, we cut off all the hardware, and then we've, uh, we're have we gonna cut this thing off to uh, to fix that to the D loop on my string. That way I can bite, up, bite down with it on my molars, and then um, see if we can shoot a bow with my teeth. Just glad I don't have to use my foot or my <laughs> <laughs> leg or something like that, because that would probably not be good, so. So we got bow master Justin Grimes here doing all the heavy lifting on this deal he's uh, he's promised me that I'm gonna be probably a better shooter than before 100%. <laughs> so what Justin's gonna do is he's gonna put that collar through that or that D loop through that collar and we're gonna make that a mouth tab.
So what I like about this PSE bow is we have that module there we can change the draw length. Um, so we're going to drop it an inch and a half or so, whatever makes sense. And had I not had that, I'd be out of luck. All right, so this is going to be the first shot. And I don't know what to think about this, but um, hopefully, hopefully I don't jerk all my teeth out. <laughs> all right, this is going to be weird. Let's give this a shot. Yeah, I will, I will. <laughs> oh, Mario messed up. Here. Give her heck. There you go. Well, didn't pull my teeth out. <laughs> I think I think we're gonna have to pull some more off the draw length. It feels pretty long. Yep. Um, so we'll try that. Okay, so this is a little weird when I draw it back, so I have to kind of tip my bow. I can help help myself here. My, my hand's not completely crippled, but kind of tip my bow. I bite with the, the molars on the right-hand side and the back. I might have pulled that one, I'm not sure. <laughs> Letting down's kind of funky too, huh? Yeah, let down's kind of weird. That peep twisted there. Uh, still doing it. All right, let's try this again. All right, so I guess uh, setting up a bow for the mouth tab isn't 100% super easy, but it really wasn't that hard once we kind of figured it out. Uh, we had to experiment a little bit here, and uh, I'll let Justin kind of talk to you about what we did. All right, so a couple of hiccups we ran into with getting Dirk set up for the mouth tab were draw length, obviously, because he's drawn back with his mouth. Um, so that took some playing with. We changed it, I think, four times to get it to the length that worked the best. And that was monkey in with the length of the top itself and the draw length. Got that all set. We tried running a traditional loop with soft knots in between and the tab behind it. So it was pulling directly behind the arrow. That didn't work because it, the peep needed to be so low that we were running out of adjustment with the sight. So what we ended up doing is tying a oversized soft knot below and then a standard loop above just pinched together and this gave us enough room to get the peep to the height where we needed it to and not pinch the arrow and get knock pinch there and I'm sure you'll see shortly that hitting behind the pin at 20 is, is no big deal at all so um, it took some doing but we got it to where it needs to be and the elk are in trouble. <laughs> all right guys been practicing in here quite a bit with this new mouth tab on the old pse and it seems to be working pretty good um all in all i can hit pretty accurately uh, i've been shooting field points with broadheads and we're grouping pretty good every now and then i'll have a, a weird moment and kind of twitch or whatever but um, I'm picking it up pretty good. I'm pretty confident there's going to be some uh, there's some big bulls in trouble uh, in North Idaho here. So uh, let's give it a shot. Let me shoot a little bit. We're at 20 yards here, and uh, get it. Try this. Try this out at 20 yards. <laughs> 
pretty good, pretty good. Now I'm going to give it, here's a field point. These arrows are a little bit heavy spined. Um, I got some more day six arrows coming in the, the mail in a day or two. A little lighter spine. I'm going to lighten them up just a little bit. Um, that way I can maybe get to shoot out to 40. I got a 20 yard pin, a 30 yard pin, and I can't quite get a 40 yard pin. So I'm hoping to get a little more space here to get a 40 yard pin. Um, but 20 and 30 are just hammering it. Had a weird moment there. Kind of flinched it. Um, you know, it's not inside the little circle, but it, if it was an elk, it was definitely be in the kill zone. That's a little better, a little bit high, a little to the left, but uh, still pretty good. Um, let's go take a look. So, not too bad of a group. Um, yeah, I got this one flyer over on the right hand side, but uh, definitely would kill an elk with that. All right, well, I'm gonna just keep on practicing in here and uh, Let's see, today is Wednesday. Um, on Monday, my uh, camera guy, Dusty Roop, is gonna come up and we're gonna head to elk camp and uh, see what we can do. Hopefully something amazing. It'll be amazing if I can kill an elk with this stupid setup, but I'm feeling pretty confident, honestly. Just, we gotta get bulls to bugle. If bulls will bugle, they're in trouble. Okay, we're backed up here to 30, so see what kind of damage I can do back here. A little low on that one. Probably dropped my arm. A little bit left, but still pretty good. Both definitely a kill shot. One thing I'm fighting here a little bit with this tab, it turns a little bit and misaligns my peep. So I'll have to be really cognizant of that when I'm elk hunting because I don't want that to be fouling me up, pulling back, and not be able to see through my peep. That'd be kind of a no bueno. That one was wild. A little bit wild. Still on the borderline of that kill zone. You know, you want to look at like kind of like a a paper plate, like a 10 or 11 inch paper plate. Should be able to hit with inside that and kill an elk pretty, pretty easily. All right, that one went wild the other direction. So as you can see, four shots in a row, get a little fatigued. Um, the biggest thing I think I'm going to talk about here is just working on form. Um, it's a little weird at first. It's uh, good shots are easy to make until you get a little bit fatigued. And then um, your arm kind of moves around or maybe your neck isn't quite right. And, um, and you, you, your, your groups start getting a little bigger. So um, I'm just going to keep doing this every day uh several times a day until i can get get ready to go for next week and uh i'm pretty confident um 
keep my shots close. I'd like to have a 40 yard pin just in case I get an arrow in one and the bull gets out there a little bit and I can still get another arrow into him. That'd be really helpful. So anyway, um, just going to keep on doing it. Hope you guys enjoyed uh, watching this. Uh, comment below if you've had to shoot with a mouth tab too and tell me how it turned out. Um, I, I've seen a lot of people do it over the year. There's Olympic athletes that do it. Uh, good old Larry D. Jones, one of the one of the most iconic elk hunting legends uh, of our time. You know, he hunt, he's hunted with a, a mouth tab for over the years. Anyway, comment below. Uh, tell me what you think, and we're gonna see if we can kill a big bull elk here in North Idaho. Thanks for watching.